Hey, this is Horner, and we're going to look at uh, Torque. This is 7.3 out of the reading guide that you have for the uh, reading that you did. And you'll notice that it says five torques are applied to the door. So here's one, two, three, and then four here is applied this way, and five. So you can kind of see you're pushing the door up at an angle here then you're pushing it back the opposite way at an angle. And all you have to do is just figure out whether it's going clockwise or counterclockwise. So when we push on it in this direction, okay, then the door's gonna swing up this way. And so when it swings up this way, we see it's going counterclockwise, so that's definitely positive. Uh, if we do F3, we do the same thing. Uh, the door will go in the same direction, and so we'll also call that one positive. If we look at F2, uh, when you push from the top in this direction, so you got to kind of think about you're pushing it in this direction to apply this force, uh, then it will go in this direction, which we know is negative. Uh, same thing for number five, it'll go negative because it will go in the same direction. But when we push it along the hinge, it's not going to rotate either way. So the torque for uh, number four is actually zero. If we go to number 13, it says six forces. So you can see all six of the forces here, uh, each of a magnitude of either F or 2F are applied to the door. They want us to rank these in order from the largest to the smallest, uh, the six torques T1 through uh, tau six about the hinge. So your order that you should have is the torque of number two is going to be greater than the torque of number one which is going to be equal to the torque of number four, which is greater than the torque of number three, which is equal to the torque of number five, and that's greater than the torque of number six. So when we look at number six, we know that this one's zero because it's just pushing through the door. Uh, if we look at torque number two, this one is going to be the biggest because it's at a 90 degree angle and it is the furthest from the door. Uh, torque number one is going to be uh, the next one uh, that is somewhat uh, large, so it's the second largest. Uh, it is a distance of L over four, and you'll notice that it is being pushed at another 90 degree angle. Now, we need to look at torque number four. Torque number four, we see that uh, if this is 2F, then torque number four is just F. Uh, and the distance between those two is L over four. So we know that T1 is equal to T4, and it's because for T1, T1 is equal to L over four, and then we could multiply that times two F, uh, because that's its magnitude, and that gives us one half L times F, because remember, it's force times distance. So this is my distance, and this is my force, is what they're doing. Uh, so that's number one. If we look at torque number four, then it's the same type of thing. It's L over two, because now L over four plus L over four is two L over four, so that's just L over two. And then we multiply that times F, because it's only got a force of one, and that is equal to one-half L times F. So we know that these two are equal. We know that this one's on the end and this one's on the end. So now we have these last two. We have, uh, this one looks like it's at about 45 degrees, and this one looks like it's at also 45 degrees, but notice they're going in two different directions. Even though they're going in two different directions, we do know that both of these are going to produce the same torque. One of them is getting pushed up and to the right, so that makes the door go this way, but the other one is getting pushed um, up and to the left, but that will also generate the same force on the door. Uh, the same forces, of course, uh, different directions, but both at 45 degrees, and so those, those will both give me the same thing. So let's look at the equation. Torque number three and torque number five both work the same way. Uh, they're both at a distance, so notice our distance is L over two, and then our force is the square root of two over two because they both are at a 45 degree angle, and if we think about uh, the force going in this direction, that would be the sine of the angle. Uh, so here we've got these, 
And if you go ahead and do your math, we get the square root of 2 over 4 times LF. So really, it's just looking to see kind of how they are the same. This is the math to back it up. You really don't need to know the math, but you do need to kind of be able to tell which ones are going to be bigger and which ones are going to be smaller. So a little bit more complicated question. Uh, let's go ahead and look at number 14. Number 14, you have four forces. They're applied to a rod, and that rod can pivot on an axle. So when it pivots on the axle, we know it's either going to turn clockwise or counterclockwise. So here's our little pivot. Here's our axle. And then this is free to move all the way across. So it's kind of like um, if you had... Uh, if you had just a board with a nail through it and you were holding the board uh, just with a nail and then it will, you're looking down on top. So if you hit it one way or the other, it's going to spin one way or the other, either clockwise or counterclockwise. They want us to use a black pen or pencil to draw the line of action. So we need to see kind of what's moving here. So let's go ahead and use black. We know the line of action, if we look at number one, we are taking this and we are moving it, so we're going in this direction, so we're trying to push it in this direction. It says use a red pen or pencil to draw and label the moment arm. The moment arm is really easy. It's just from the line of action, okay, from a perpendicular spot back over to the axle. So this is the line of action for number one. And then it wants us to determine if the torque about the axle is positive or negative. So this one will notice that if I push it in this direction, when it turns, it's going to go up and to the right. And we know that that is uh, got to be clockwise. And we know that clockwise is a negative torque. Let's do the same thing for number two. For number two, our line of action is over here. And so it comes up through the board. We need to draw our... Um, we need to draw the moment arm, and our moment arm just goes perpendicular to the force. And we see now that this one, uh, when we push on the board on this side, will move this direction, which is counterclockwise, which we know is positive. For number three, if you push right on the axle, the board won't move. So we say that one's zero. And then finally for number four, we can draw the uh, line of action. So the line of action will go from here right up through the edge of the board. And then we'll draw our moment arm, which is just from the axle to a line perpendicular to the, uh, to the actual um, the line of action. And then when we push this, we will see that it will also go in this direction. And that's counterclockwise, so it's also positive. For number 15, it says draw a force vector at A whose torque about the axle is negative. So if we want it to be negative, we know that we want this thing to go clockwise. So we're going to just make it go in this direction. So that would be our force. For B, we want it to be 0. So if I'm going to have this be 0, I want it to point towards the axle. Or I could also point it away from the axle. Either one of those would be appropriate. And then finally, for letter C, we want the torque to be positive. And so if I want it positive, I have to push it in this direction so that it will curl and go this way. Uh, let's go back to A. We know that A will produce a torque in this direction. So even though we're pushing the board to the right in both the cases, this one produces a positive torque, and this one produces a negative torque because of the way that the whole thing rotates. So that is uh, number 15. Let's go on down to number 16. It says the dumbbells below are all the same size, and the forces all have the same magnitude. Rank in order from the largest to smallest torques T1, T2, and T3 about the midpoint of each connecting rod. So in this one, we're just really worried about which way these things are going to turn uh, and then how much torque they have on each other. So the one that probably has the biggest torque is going to be the one with the angle that's 90 degrees. So this one has a 90 degree angle for each one of the two balls. So when I push these, I push this one up this way, pushing down this way, the whole thing will rotate then in this direction. Uh, so this one's going to have the biggest torque, so we're going to put it first. If we look at number two, we'll notice that number two, I'm pushing this ball this way, pushing this ball this way, and it looks like it's at about a 45 degree angle. If we look at number three, we're doing essentially the same thing, but instead of pushing them out, 
we're pushing them in. And whether you push them out or in really doesn't matter. Uh, for this one, we're just worried about the angle that it's making here and the angle it's making here. Same thing on this side. So uh, because of that, we know that the torque for number one is going to be greater than the torque for number two, which is now equal to the torque for number three. Um, so that is the force for each one of those. For number 17, it says that I have a bicycle. It's at rest on a smooth surface, and a force is applied to the bottom pedal as shown. So I'm going to take and I'm going to push this way on the pedal. When I do that, the whole crank goes this way, which means that the wheel turns in this direction, which would be clockwise. When it goes clockwise, it produces a negative torque. Because it's producing a negative torque and it's pushing backwards on the road, then the bicycle will go forward. And we know that the bicycle will go forward, so it's going to go to the right. And it's because this torque from the pedal pulling on the wheel and then the wheel pushing backwards pushes backwards on the road, the road pushes forward on the bike, and that's because of Newton's third law. And that's the explanation for number 17. Uh, and that are that is uh, just the video on the answers for torque and the uh, in the reading that you had for 7.3.